Good evening to wonderful listeners or viewers of Fine TV. Uh, we welcome you to another um, edition of um, EDUSA Candidates Policy Debate 2023. Today is also um, another edition, another day, or uh, another evening where we welcome candidates from both teams, um, teams which are Renaissance and then Team SSC, which is Student Service Council. Um, as we all know, uh, viewers from the University of the Gambia, especially those from the School of Education, um, the candidates of School of Education are currently campaigning uh, to seek electorate votes um, come November 15th, uh, where um, students will go on polls to elect um, their um, different representatives in the Executive Council of the 14th Executive Council. Now, for that being the case, today we have uh, two great personnel from this particular um, um, election or candidates who are vying for the uh, position of vice presidency. We have um, Anna Manga from Team Renaissance and also uh, Mr. Abdul Dabo from Team SSC, which is the Student Service Council. So as usual, as we have already done the Secretary's General Debate and also the IPROs, uh, today we want to listen to the vice presidents, the vice presidential candidates, and also hear from them uh, what they have in store for us. What are their policies? What do they want to do uh, when they take up the mantle uh, to serve us as the vice president of the 14th Executive Council? So, so without wasting any more time, what I'll do is just to hand over the mic to uh, Mr. Abdul Dabo from Team SSC to give us a brief introduction of who he, uh, who um, the, you know what what actually brought him here and then also to tell us uh, who he is and from there we move on to um, other areas uh, of this particular debate so not forgetting fine tv for always being there for us and also for always giving us this platform we thank you very much and also thank um, those who are currently going to their um, tv and also to their facebook pages to make sure this program is never done in their absence Thank you. So, Mr. Dabo, get us to uh, to your brief introduction. Okay. Good evening, viewers. First of all, I would like to thank Allah, the Omnipotent, the Omniscient, and the Omnipresent for making us witness this auspicious of auspicious day. Mm. This is indeed auspicious because it will go down into the annal of Edusa's already enviable approach making day. Mm. So, before I go forward, I would like to <coughs> thank. The, our host here, mm -hmm. Mr. Lamin Sane, the IPRO of EDUSA of 12th, 13th Executive Council, and my honorable opponent, Anna Manga. Then I'll give a brief, this brief introduction of myself. I am Abdul Dabo, commonly known as, the, known as the preacher. I'm a spoken word artist, mm -hmm. a poet, and also a songwriter. I am born and brought up in Kauru. I did all my schooling there from primary school to senior secondary school where I graduated in at Kauru Senior Secondary School in 2010. Then from there I sat for two years and then left for Gambia College in 2013 for my HTC, major in English language and minor in SES. In 2015 I graduated in at, at Gambia College doing HTC then I was posted to Kauru Upper Basic School, where I spent four years teaching English language. Then from there, in 20, 2018, I was posted to Kayai Basic Cycle at Nyani, where I spent one term. Then I left for the, for the University of the Gambia on the School of Arts and Science, where I spent one semester on a self-sponsor, so I couldn't go scholarship, I deferred, and later changed my school and my major, then I was admit I came into school of education, majored in English language and minor in history. Currently, I am on the school of education, vying for the position of vice president under the banner of SSC. So this is just a brief introduction of who Abdul Dabo is. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dago, who is also known as the preacher. Um, he will be one of the um, co-debaters, if I may call um, it. Uh, we have a policy debate, as I alluded before, and it means we we'll just want to hear the policies of uh, these candidates. So I will now move on to um, Anna Manga, who is also vying for the same position uh, under the play card of uh, Team Renaissance. Anna, uh, you want to give us a brief description or an uh, introduction of yourself before we move on to the um, other pertinent issues here. Thank you so much, Namin, for having me on this educative and interesting program. Um, good evening, viewers. Good evening, my honorable opponent, the preacher. And good evening to Fine TV. And once again, thank you for hosting us and always giving us the avenue to showcase our talents and whatsoever we have on this beautiful platform. Um, to go in detail of um, who Anna is, um, I am Anna Manga, a second year student at the University of the Gambia School of Education. Anna Manga is born and brought up in the Gambia, rose through the educational chain from primary to senior. And the most amazing thing is, rosing through this rank, I serve as a head girl. So I serve as a head girl, both my primary to my senior secondary school. I graduated at Amitek Senior Secondary School as the head girl in 2015. And upon my completion, I went to the Gambia College, where I acquired a HTC, and I graduated with distinction. Then I was posted to John Pickrell, where I changed my post into Provincial Gambia with the belief that as a teacher, you should be ready and be prepared to serve anywhere. For we are Gambians and we, are, we should be ready to serve the length and breadth of the country. When I was serving in Diabugu, I served as a teacher coordinator for peer health throughout my four years of staying in the school. I served as a teacher coordinator for Amnesty International in partnership with Mopsi Human Rights Clubs in various schools in the Gambia. And not only that, I serve as the HOD for the sport department. I serve as the HOD for the science department. I serve as a committee member in the discipline committee. Not only that, I serve in so many activities and attend series of training, the PSI, PMI, and so on. Then later move on to Kafuta Upper and Senior Secondary School, where I continue serving as the coordinator for peer health, coordinator for amnesty. Till date, I am still coordinating so many activities down there in the school. Anna Manga that you are seeing in front of you was among the committee members selected to coordinate the culture committee for West Coast region during the neck of 2022. Anna Manga standing in front of you here is also an entrepreneur, the founder of Ayo's Vegetable Garden. And a manga that you are seeing in front of you is currently the public speaker for the University of the Gambia School of Education on the VCFC debate and public speaking. Anamanga was used as a speaker during the nationwide tour. Anamanga is currently serving in this 13th Executive Council under the Technical and Logistic Committee. Anamanga is the captain for the Lioness of Edusa during the VCNC since year one in year two. Lamin, if I want to buttress on who is Anna Manga, I want to believe I will take the entire soul, so I will stop here. Thank and you. this Anna Manga is the one vying for the position of vice presidency under the play card of Team Renaissance. Thank you very much. So that is clear. Um, that is the, um, the debaters. And those are the debaters for, for, for this particular evening debate uh, between um, candidates of School of Education, especially candidates of Education Students Association. So the introduction has already taken place. And now we move on to the uh, very important question. Um, Anna, as you've already mentioned, so the numerous um, um, uh, works of life you've already gone through, um, would you tell us now the reason why we the students of um, School of Education, especially under EDUSA, why we should actually vote for you as our next VP. Thank you so much once again, Slamin, for that um, wonderful question. Um, I want to start with an African proverb which says, a single bracelet does not jiggle. Mm -hmm. And I am a leader who was born and believe in this statement, that I should not take the back seat. I should always be in the forefront. 
And I want to believe Edusens have already seen what Anna is doing for them and the results which Anna is bringing for them just in year one and year two. I can say just in year one because year two, I'm just in my first semester. Anna Manga, when I was enrolled, just in my year one, just one month, some few weeks old, I came out wholeheartedly to saw myself in the VCNC football tournament where I played and I was awarded a certificate, the woman of the match. So it's my participation and an ambition that I have towards Edusens. Not only that, in A1, like I earlier alluded, I was the only A1 student who was used as a speaker to speak in the length and breadth of the country during the nationwide tour, which is a very vibrant and impact activities always conducted by the executive. Anna Manga here is representing Edusen, selling their name out there, and already I secure a ticket for them towards the, to the semi-finale debate and public speaking happening currently in the UTG. So I want to believe all what I have done is already enough for the Edusens to vote me in. But I have also what we call policy and programs which I have, and I believe this policy and programs, when I sell it to Edison, they listen to it and already seen the achievement I am doing for them, they're solely going to vote me into office. So this policy that I have, I have up to six policies, but I am going to buttress on three. And the sixth policy which I have for you is, the first one is rebranding the nationwide tour. The second policy I have is to rebrand the orientation ceremony. The third policy I have for you is to work on the missing grades. The fourth policy I have for you, beautiful Edison, is to stage the first ever pageantry competition in Edusa called the Face of Edusa. And not only that, I want to strengthen the partnership which is already existent, created by the 13 Executive Council. I, Anna Manga, also is a leader who believes in taking the opinion of the people that I serve. And therefore, the last point I have, which is what? Creation of suggestion boss. So, Lamin, I will want to stop here. Then, if I'm giving the platform uh, the, the, the mic again, then I will buttress on those three points which I want to talk about. But these are the six policies which I have for my fellow Edwardians. Thank you. That is clear. So, those are the positions, uh, so some of the um, policies that Anna wants to uh, bring to Edusans once she's elected. Now we we'll listen to the preacher, uh, who is also called Abdul Dabo uh, by name, uh, to also tell us the reason why we should actually vote him in come uh, November 15th. Okay, I would like to start with these quotations, which says, people do not care what you know, how much you know until they know how much you care. With regard to that, I can say I have been serving EDUSA from the inception, from the time I started my, my, my program in the School of Education. In 2001, when I came into School of Education, in my first semester, I served as a tutor for syntax, which is a 400 level course. I took the students, my, my colleagues, I organized it single-handedly and then took them through for them to prepare them to have to come out with, with great things in, in their exam. Then from there, I also served in the, in the tutorial. I served in a tutorial that is education, psychology, psychology of education. I served as a tutor in psychology of education in 2023. Then I served as a tutor for English 102, 102 in 2003, in 2023. Then I also represented Edusa in, in a poetry competition in 2003 on 2023. That is on, on, on a program that is, that was conducted at, at Ozone Bay Hotel, where I came as the, as the runner up. Then from there, I also served in numerous, in numerous events. I participated in numerous events where I served as as, as the guest poet, like in Edusa Literate, organized by the 12th Executive Council, I serve as a guest, guest poet. Also, in Edusa Literate, organized by the 13th Executive Council, I serve as a guest poet, and also in the awards, and in the award night, I also serve as a, as a guest poet on the theme, role of teachers in national development. So I have been serving Edusa. I have been serving Edusa on, may, on many occasions. So therefore, this should give, make the Edusans to vote for me in the forthcoming edition, forthcoming election. Not only that, not only my service to Edusa, but also I have served as 
leaders in in many places because when i was taking at kauru i was the secretary general that is the staff secretary general also i served as a senior teacher at kudang upper and senior secondary school so i have been serving i have been serving i could say like i am not a mere leader i am a great leader because according to adam grant he said great leaders develop people great leaders have values and great leaders are role models so if being a great leader is serving is developing people having values and being a role model in life then i could say i can stand up and say like i am a great leader because i have been developing people i have values and also i am a role model in life currently there are a lot of youngsters who have been looking up to me and i have impacted the life of lot of youngsters in the in the gambi here i have impacted i was i was a ceo or a co-founder of imsa which is a poetry organization or a poetry team that is registered that is a registered team in as the ceo i could have become the president or i could have become the vice president but then i didn't believe i, be, I didn't believe in that i want to give the mantle to the youth so i bring the young people in and give them give them the administrative positions for them to serve then i sit back and then i was serving behind advising them and mentoring them and in doing so i have recorded a lot of poems for youngsters i could say i have recorded more than 50 50 poems because i have got a contract with a studio with a studio man where he will record for me free of charge then at the end of the at the end of the month or years if i have anything then i will bring it to him and offer it to him so i have been serving i have been developing people i have been a role model to people and to be a vice president to be a vice president one of the responsibility of a vice president is in organizing what organizing orientation and in orientation among the important things in orientation is mentorship and if that is that if that is mentor that is mentorship which means i have I have got the experience already because I have been mentoring people. I have mentored a lot of people. There are a lot of people who are who are been who are looking up to me at this juncture. So that to continue from there, like to continue with the in the orientation to mentor them to guide them, that is going to be an easy thing to me because currently I am doing it in the school of education. I am serving my fellow students. I am guiding them on how to register courses. I am guiding them, giving them advice on how to advance in their academic pursuit. So I have been doing all that free of charge. Okay. So therefore, as a leader, you need the heart, you need the grace to help people to prosper in life. So that is an enough reason why the education should vote for me. Thank you. So that is it. So now we move on to the next <coughs> one. Um, Anna, you made mention that um, you. actually rebrand the nationwide too um how are you going to do this and what are some of the mechanisms you want to put in place to make sure this happens um thank you so much lamin earlier i mentioned six policies to okay. educens yes. and i said i'm going to portray three or four on this policies and the rest of the policies i invite educens come on the 14 on the convention to hear the rest of my policies okay. so to start with the rebranding of the nation white tour mm-hmm. it is stated in the constitution of edusen that the executive members should try to participate in creating awareness and conduct research on burning issues affecting our society especially the educational sector i mm-hmm. so you will find out that edusa do conduct this significant and educative activity called the nation white tour So in the nation right or you'll find out that innocents will go out there just to create awareness on issues affecting us but there will be no proper research conducted along in order to back the report when they giving out report with their partners. So this is why I feel like when I am voted into office I will work hand in glove with the education and research ministry to try to involve in creating research as we embark on the nation white tour which means we are going to create double roles now instead of single role we will be doing awareness and also conducting research along the line which means we are going to set standard questionnaires on burning issues that is affecting the educational sector for me as an individual and the team that i represent we believe that there are a lot of problems in our educational sector and all these problems of course have possible solutions but you cannot know their solution if you do not conduct yourself in research to know what is the root cause so that is the rebranding which i want to involve in the nationwide tour 
The next point I give you is the rebranding of the orientation ceremony. If you go in the constitution, section 14 will tell you the role of the vice president. The vice president should be in consultation with the faculty officer in order to create a proper and standard orientation for the new index. And this is why I'm learning. It will be amazing to know that currently I'm already a tight friend or a daughter to Auntie Jenna. And I know the reason why I'm training, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to bring this bond between I and Auntie Jenna is to make sure I create that standard orientation for the students of EDUSA, uh, EDUSA the new index. That is, when the students are being taken in, a lot of them find difficulties in understanding how those universities operate. So what I want, on the day of orientation, I am going to prepare what we call booklets. These booklets are going to contain all the information that are needed and required as a university student. And how are you going to have the smooth running of your course? This booklet is going to contain all that. Not only that learning, guess what amazing thing do I have? I'm going to work with the office of the IPRO to create standard videos of all the areas that they need to know. These videos are going to be sent to each and every student new intake of the university so that as they read the video, it will be a substantive material together with the booklet that have been prepared for them. And I'm not going to stop there. Currently, I have already started serving the new index in the mentorship page where we create different episodes where we train and tell this young, uh, the new index what and what is needed of them. So during the orientation, not only creating the booklet and creating videos for them, but also that platform will continue where we have various episodes, various episodes day by day in order to enlighten them. I believe with that, they will have no question. No stone will be left on tone just to make them understand the system of UTG. To come to my last point. Hey, Lamin, guess what? Anna standing in front of you here is very much conscious that the 13 executive council have created a lot of partnership which have really helped the council in achieving your goal. I know you will agree with me that the 13 executive council have made tremendous achievement. I know you, you it did down in your heart. You are saying, yes, Anna, we did. And no, you did not do this alone by collecting the phone from the student. Because in the Congress, the finance minister have reported that the phone collected for the students, that is the union due, was less than 50,000. And 50,000 obviously cannot sustain the activities of the executive council. No. So what I'm going to do is to strengthen the partnership. And how am I going to do it? I earlier informed this platform that I am a coordinator for Amnesty International in partnership with MOPSI. Not only that, I am a coordinator for PIHEL, Nova Scotia Gambia Association. I am a member for German... Uh, foundation for women in participation. All these are platforms that I am going to use my influence in order to create partnership with those organizations with EDUSA so that at least we can keep having capacity building and also help us in certain activities that we want to conduct as an executive council because we know the union juice and whatever we have in that cover of course cannot cover all what we have. Lamin, I will stop here and given more opportunities I will buttress more on my remaining policies. Okay. So that is it. Um, Anna has already buttressed on the um, areas she want to um, elaborate on. I will also um, really work hard on to make sure we actually um, get a better EDUSA. Mr. Dow, um, as a vice president, you understand that um, you should actually be deputizing the president to make sure whatever he needs to do or she needs to do uh, in his absence or in her absence, uh, we are the one to take the mantle up. What are we expecting from you, from your vice presidency? What are some of the things you want EDUSAMS to have? Okay, thank you. That is a good question. Okay, I am made to know that in the Constitution, it is stated that the vice president, in section 14, the vice president should deputize the president in the exercise of his or her duty. The vice president should also should also collaborate with the vice president of the UTGs who in dealing with academic matters. So all those ones are among the administrative responsibilities of the vice president. In my policy, like when I am voted as the vice president, I am going to look at four areas, right? And they are first welfare, then accessibility, collaboration, and then you have, yeah, and collaboration. Now, first of all, as it is said, 
like when you are dealing with issues, you have to anchor it on the, on the three P's, right? First, you look at what? You look at the purpose. Then you look at priority and then you look at, you look at productivity. So as a student of EDUSA, I am cognizant of the fact that EDUSANs are having a lot of bonding problems. But like my priority area is going to be on, on the academic side. Because as the vice president, I am going to be responsible for the internal affairs of the, of, of the, of the school. So therefore, I will be in touch with the students. They will be announcing their problems to me. They will be telling me their problems so that I could forward it to relevant authorities for it to be solved. So when I become the vice president, first, I will promote the welfare of the students. I will promote the welfare of the students. I will promote the welfare of the students in the 2020, as stipulated in the 2023 constitution of EDUSA. That is to protect the interests the, the interest of academic life of the students. Because as we know, academic is very important. As I speak, currently there are a lot of students who are having missing grades, whose marks have not been uploaded, right? There are a lot of students. If you go to platform, you normally hear that one there, right? So it is a boring issue. So when I come as the vice president, first, the first thing I'm going to do is to work on the academic issue. I am going to make sure that lecturers upload marks on on time because like this is affecting a lot of students because there are students who are on the scholarship that is the mrc holland scholarship which condition among others is to have a gp of three point for you to be clear so therefore there are students who have got may who have done three three courses that which marks have not been uploaded so therefore obviously it means they are going to be a victim of that so that's why i make that as my priority to help in ameliorating that situation or eradicating that, 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 that problem in, in EDUSA, right? So when I come, the first thing I'm going to do is to, is to work on that, to eradicate that, right? First, as the vice president, it is mentioned in the constitution that to solve academic problem, you have to what? You will forward it to the advisory board. So the advisory board is responsible to advise the executive council on all sensitive academic and administrative issues. So the first thing I need to do is to forward it to the advisory board to get advice from them. Then from there, I will forward it to the relevant authorities for it to be solved. Because it is our right. Our marks needs to be entered. Our marks need to be entered on time. Because there is a time bound that is given to every lecturer to enter marks. So there, one is a boring issue. Another thing is, is uploading of is what? Another thing is late registration of courses. That one also is a boring issue in, in education. Like most of the time, people, students will find it very difficult to register these educational courses because the number of students that normally registers are more than the courses that are being catered for us. So therefore, I will work on that. I am going to work on that. Though it is not going to be direct, but I am going to advocate. I am going to advocate for that. I will advocate that to the to the main union, that is the SU, for them to work on that. So the strategy I'm going to use in, in eradicating that or in improving that is to suggest to them to work on to, to work on on three on three semester registration. Three semester registration is happening in other universities. Right? So when there is pre pre, pre semester registration that one will, is going to help the authorities to know the, to have the correct data so that they will be able to supply us with enough lecturers before lessons will start, before, because lessons will start. And also it will help them to know the peoples who are needed, to know the number of students who have registered so that they will make, do some adjustment to work on such issues. So this, among others, is one of the priority areas that I am going to look at when I become the vice president. Yeah, that's fine. So I believe um, if Edusans want to hear more of uh, the policies that these um, candidates want to elaborate on, please make sure you attend the convention on the 14th November, where we'll hear from them in detail um, on of all the policies that they want to um, actually implement when they come to office. Anna, now I want to... Um, ask you this particular question mm -hmm. where we start <clears throat> the actual 
uh, fighting uh, debate sort of. Um, that is to say, you've already heard from preacher and a preacher heard from you too. Mm -hmm. What do you think um, you can do better than preacher that a Jewson should actually vote you in? Um, thank you so much, Lamin. <clears throat> I am kind of surprised mm -hmm. that my opponent is a leader that believes in the word I. Because all what I hear him say more is, I will, I will, I will. But I am a leader who doesn't believe in I. I believe in we. Because in we, we have more power and more strength and something easier than the power of I. In the Constitution, I is not even stated there. It is the office of the Vice President. So work in collaboration with the Office of the Vice President Student SU in order to solve academic matters. So let me guess what? As an economist, I am not going to do this alone. I'm going to work with the Education and Research Minister of School of Education to systematically collect data of affected students. And guess what we're going to do? We are not going to just collect the data and we stop there. We said in solving an issue, there is a protocol that you need to use. You just don't jump up and then you go to the highest ladder. No. First, I will work with my education and research minister to find out from the lecturer involved. Because learning, ah, the truth needs to be told to certain students. Sometimes they will come and complain to you. So, so lecturer have not do this and do that to me. When, when you make deep findings and research, you find out that it was the student who is at fault. So first, before we take matters to any level, we will first try to see the lecturer concern, to make a consultation, to really know where does the problem lies. If the problem now lies in the lecturer, then now we will see how best to talk to the lecturer in mitigating the problem. In an event that that is not solved, is then that we try to see anti Geneva the faculty officer, to see how best we can mitigate the problem and in engaging anti Geneva, anti Geneva should be her responsibility to consult the dean of school of education. If matters cannot be handled at that level, that is the time my office will link the highest office, which is the office of the vice president, SU, and the office of the education and research will now also link the office of the education and research at SU. At SU level, they will now see how best to solve it. In an event they cannot solve it, the SU now, we now lace with what we call the Director of Student Affairs. I hope you see the chain which I am explaining. So that shows you that I understand very well on how these things are going to work when it comes to the issue of solving missing grade. And now you will be amazed that currently I am already in close contact with both the VP and the Education and Research Minister of the current executive to know how did they solve out this issue. Because they say the best person to solve issues is the best person with the experience. For he who learn is the one who solve it to the best. But he who do not learn, he who do not know, will always take the wrong direction and therefore students will find it difficult. So the missing grade, guess what? I have it all covered for you. And I have the best strategy that I'm going to give you. And I believe in the power of we and not the power of I. Thank you. Thank you. So you had it. The, your opponent said we were using the personal pronoun I instead of we. Yeah, I, yes, I was using the personal pronoun I as stated in the constitution. I said, but like, see, misconstrue it. I understand that like using I, leaders don't use I, right? Leadership is about we. Leadership is about we. And I understand that as a great leader, Great leader, a great leader is not necessarily a person who has done a lot of things. A great leader is someone who get other people to do many things. And I could say, I could do, I can do that. Because I have got the experience, I have got the connection, I know how to deal with people. I am very compassionate, I am very kind, also I am very easygoing. So therefore I will be able to, to do that, like, with the help of others. I know that like in solving in solving problems, most especially in, in the university, it needs to follow protocols, right? I know it used to follow protocols. I just have given the shortcut, but then I understand that like to solve a problem, it first needs to start from where? It starts has to be a collaboration with the 
with the education on the side minister because the education on the side minister is the one responsible for educational matters. So it is going to be in collaboration with that, right? Then after you have this course with the education on the side minister, then you forward it to the executive level, then it will be discussed. And in the executive level, there is an advisory board. The advisory board responsibility is to give advice on sensitive, on academic and administrative issues, sensitive academic and administrative issues. I understand that. Then from there, you, fo you follow the chains until it is solved amicably. I understand. So, so now, that. what do you think Anna is actually lacking that you are better than her in this position? Yeah. Like Anna, Anna, the connection that Anna has with people are mostly people who are already who are already active in, in the school of education, who are already part of the part of the activities and then activities. But there are other students who are who do not so much interest in, in educational issues, most especially when it comes to the union. So therefore I know those people, right? I have been dealing with them because I came to the university before, before and I was enrolled in the university since 2018. So I have done courses with, with people. Like I have, in my first semester, I have done a 400 level course, which is normally done with what? Only mature students. For Anna, she has done only these courses. That is two, 100 level courses, 200 level. So she, she was, she is only approaching to meet people who are in that level with her. But there are others who are in the upper level whom Anna didn't know. So therefore, I am already acquainted with them. So if I become the vice president, I will be able to talk to them, convince them, and then bring in to participate in activities to make Edu great again. Anna, so does that mean you will not be able to connect to those people that preacher can connect? <laughs> laughing, this word laughing, you know. I am quite amazing that my opponent could say that Anna has connection with people who are already involved into executive work. That shows how I am more experienced than him. Do you see the point? He already admitted to the media that Anna is already connected with people who are already engaged in executive work. That shows that a leader should be someone who doesn't take the back seat. A leader should be someone who will be ready to take up the front seat. For if you already meet people, your service will already speak up for you just like right now. My service is already speaking up for me of who Anna is. Unlike him, do you get that lament? And coming to what he is saying that I am just in year two, year four, whatever, and he's in year four, you will be amazing if you go to make research or investigate into the IC my nomination. It is obviously dominated by the Air Force. That shows they know who Anna is. Anna is a person who believes that I do not have to take the back seat. I have to take the front seat. For he made a mistake, he mentioned something here, which I want to correct him. That a leader should not be someone who does. A leader should be someone who sits and then will tell people do. That is not a leader. A leader should be influential. A leader should be someone who come up and then you take up the responsibility that you do. Sometimes when you take up the front seat as you do, you will motivate others to say, hey, our leader is doing this. Why not we join and then collaborate with him or her and then we achieve our goal. That is a leader. A leader should not take the back seat. That is not my belief. Hello, Edison. Has you just hear my opening statement? So when you vote him into office, he is going to take the back seat. He is not going to lead you in anything. And he will ask you to do. And I am not that person. I told you, when I was just one month, some few week old, I come out wholeheartedly to participate for Edusa. And I was given the certificate of the best participant in that activity. That shows that whatever I venture into fellow Edison, know that the outcome is always going to be best. Do you get it? I repeat again. When you vote Anna into office, know that the outcome is always going to be the best because I am a leader who believes in doing and not the leader who believes in taking the back seat and write and ask you to do and speak and ask you to do. I will do it. And then you will know that that is the leader. The world is advocating for leaders that do us, leaders that come out to do things and not leaders that take up the back seat. Those are the old days when we allow leaders to take the back seat. Now we want leaders that are doers, leaders that give us resources. And I am a resource-oriented leader. I am eloquent and I am experienced. Thank you. Thank you. So does that mean you'll be that sort of leader who will sit at the back and I'll meet you there? No. Like when I mean, when I said like leaders are people who leaders are not, a leader, a great leader don't necessarily mean someone who have those many things. It is someone who get other people to do many things. Like 
That is what I said. But that doesn't mean that like I am going to be at the at the back front, right? What I mean here is to what? As a leader, you need to inspire your 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 your, your, your followers. You need to inspire. You need to inspire them to do more, to achieve more, and to dream more. That is what leadership is to me. That is what leadership to me. A great leader has to inspire its followers. It has to inspire, and that is what I have been doing throughout my life. I have been inspiring people. I have inspired people who have achieved a lot in life, who have dreamed high, and they have achieved a lot. And if that, what leadership, what lead a leader do, then I could say I am a, I am a great leader because I have done that. If you go out there, there are a lot of people who are progressing there. When you ask them, I am, be, I am one among the, I am behind, I am behind their work. I am behind their, their, their progress because I have inspired them. I have that heart to inspire them. It doesn't matter whether I progress or not. What my interest is, is to see other people's progress. So when I become as the vice president, I am going to do the same for Edusas. I will lead them in the time of struggle. And then in the time of victory, I will sit back and then say they do it. Thank you. So another very important thing is Edusans right now have a very big problem. You as the vice president or as an aspirant who may be, uh, who knows, come November 15th. What, what is that big problem or main problem in Edusa that you want to solve when you come up? Um, thank you once again, Slamin. Mm. I will want to correct my opponent on this statement. I am Anna, a leader who believes that when hope seems lost, I restore the glory back. And this situation was really found in Edusense just in the recent holiday. When everybody was engaged in their holidays, busy with their personal activities, education was at a situation when hope seems lost. The education and research minister told of no one but Anna when he contacted me on whom to represent Edusa on the public speaking, VC, MC debate and public speaking, what I told him all, consider it done. I am already there. And guess what? During the rainy season, it will be raining. I will find out how to get my umbrella and whatever. Enter down there just to go and participate in the name of bringing glory to Edusen. I want to believe Lamin. Edusens will solely pay the heart I have for them. Edusens will never let this struggle I have done for them die. Anna is that leader who joined the Edusens to go length and breadth of this country to advocate and become strong ambassadors for them. I want to believe Edusen will not let this struggle go away. Lamin, to come in to the problem that you want to talk about. And that is the problem I am facing right now as a participant representing the School of Education. And that is coming out to participate for EDUSA. That is a great problem when it comes to EDUSA. EDUSA is considered the most mature school in the University of the Gambia. But guess what, Lamin? Participation is a big problem when it comes to EDUSA. It seems EDUSA don't feel proud of themselves. And this is a problem that I want to break when I am elected into office. I will give them the courage, I will give them the hope, I will give them the motivation to show them that that they are greater than all the students in the University of Gambia. For each and every student enrolled in the school have passed through the hands of teachers. And therefore, I will make them believe and make them practice that they are greater and they will live by that. Participation I will try by almost mean learning. I will leave no stone unturned to make sure Edusans participate in each and every activities happening in the university. And this is why you'll be amazing. I mentioned it here in one of my policies that I will take the first ever pageantry competition in the university. Because you look at currently, in the recent phase of UTG, at night, I was there, my opponent wasn't there. That's so the love and heart I have for Edusans. I was there that night. I was there till 5 a.m. cheering up our representative. Because they need love and support. He wasn't there. He was sleeping on his fine bed. When I was there struggling and staring up Edusens. So Lamin, our greatest problem in Edusa is participation. And when I am elected into office, I promise you Edusens, I will leave no stone unturned to make sure I give you all the motivation that you need. That we come out and participate in all the activities happening within the university and outside the university. Thank you. So, what is the big problem you want to solve for education? 
Okay, that's a good question. The big problem that I want to solve for education, as I said earlier on, like a policy has to be based on the three P's. That is, that is purpose, priority, and then productivity. The big problems that inspired me to buy for the position of the VP is the is the education is the is the academic side. It is the academic side because any platform you go to, you hear students complaining. You hear people, students complaining. Lot of lot of students are having missing grades. Their marks have not been entered for them. Most especially courses that are being taken by lecturers, some lecturers on the School of Arts and Science. That is a big problem, especially when you go to our English department. There are a lot of problems, problems that the students are facing. Currently, most of the marks in the English department, most especially literature, that is African drama, drama and creative writing, and many other courses. The marks have not been uploaded since after the exam. And that has drastically affected the students. So therefore, that is going to be my priority area. I am going to work on that because I know that it is not affecting only school of edu only only English language department. It is affecting other department as well. So when I come in as the VP, the first step I am going to do because I believe that like that is the most important thing to me. Students academic is the most important thing to me, and it is the most important thing to them as of as university students because most of them are about to graduate and they need those marks, and some of them are on the scholarships and. They have done three courses or two courses with a particular lecturer who has not uploaded their marks. So that has led, led to some of them being cleared, being cleared lately. So therefore my priority areas is to work on the mark issue. I am going to work on the mark issue. I am going to toil, moil and boil to make sure that the mark issue is solved amicably. And I, I promise that I'm going to do everything together with the research minister. Together with the executive members, we are going to solve this. For real, we are going to solve this because it is a burning issue in the in the school of education. Okay, so that is uh, a burning issue that uh, the preacher or Abdullah wants to solve, and then Anna made mention of, of the participation of educations as uh, something which is very important and very much lacking. So that is what she wants to uh, actually correct. What other thing? Do you think is very important in this field that you want to come in? Um, Lamin, mm -hmm. I want to remind my opponent that he is just portraying on grade on grade, but probably he is not aware that the current Tatin Executive Council have done a remarkable, remarkable performance when it comes to the issue of grade. And I am going to continue. And I think I have already outlined that here, fellow educators. You have already heard the strategies I am going to use in mitigating the problem of grade issue. Currently, the School of Education, Education and Research with the Office of the Vice President have worked to make so. There is one this particular lecturer that gave almost half fail to the entire students that he taught. But guess what? They were able to use the right protocol to make sure there was a remark for the first ever in the history of EDUSA that a lecturer grade have been remarked. And when it was remarked, the students were given the grades that they deserve. And this is why, Lamin, I told you, it is always good to bang yourself, like he already acknowledged, that I am mingling with people who know, people who are working in this executive, which means I am already a level ahead of him, in a sense. I am already ahead of him, because I already know what is happening, and the right protocols I'm going to use. So the great grade he is telling you here, he is not even aware that there is already a remark of a particular course, and I'm aware, and I know how I will use those strategies, those methods, those ways, in order to solve any burning issue when it comes in issue of grade. So grade is not my problem, Edusense. That I have already considered it done because I am working with the experienced people as already alluded by my opponent. That I already got the experience and I'm working with them. Now, Lamin, the other point I will want to buttress on is also in my policy. I am a leader when I serve people. I never want their opinion and what is affecting them to be silated. And this is why I said one of my policy is creation of suggestion box on campus. When I am elected into office, Edusense, I am promising you this. I am going to make sure I work with the office of the president to make sure that we see 
suggestion box all over the campus so that when you have any problem it might be difficult for you to see one or two executive men and you just tell them verbally by mouth but just pen it down on a piece of a paper come gently to the suggestion box and drop it there for us every week every friday we will collect these suggestions and we work on them for this is going to make us a great council a council that will work without adhering to the opinions and the view of the people that you serve that is a failed council and this is why we want to come with the creation of suggestion box on campus so lamen okay yes so any response yeah okay with regard to marx anna manga is saying like the 13 executive council have already worked on mark issues yeah i am aware that like there was a remarking there was a remarking that was done by the help of the 13 executive council but here what i'm talking about is the mark issue that is currently affecting the students so if they say that they are working on that i will say like then it is not been swift because currently as i speak there are a lot of students it is high time for the marks to be uploaded because most of the lecturers that have given their courses have already uploaded their marks so why others so and there was nothing like problem solved it doesn't affect an individual it affect the whole class the whole class i'm talking about the whole the, the whole course all those that have done that particular course not in one course not in two course not in three course they are all been affected so if you are saying they are they are working on that they have worked on that i will say no because like i i am i'm a victim of that i am part of them so i know their problem so since the exam was done still there is no mark that was been uploaded and we have been following it as uh, uh, as members of that course we have been doing it and we were crying for the for the 13 executive council that is the members to come in and intervene but still we are we are following it our students at our level so if you are saying that like the 13 executive council is has work on that i will say big no to that okay so very deep we are almost to the end of the program um time is no more a friend but then um educers are still watching and listening and then they will actually do their own judgment by themselves So before we actually move on or complete this particular episode of the policy debate um what else the other things that are very important that you left behind to actually tell the listeners or the viewers I want to remind mm-hmm. educens that since the program start you could hear only one thing from my opponent that is working on the grades so educens this is a leader that you have that do not have a creative mind all the mind he have is only one thing and when you vote him into office he is going to do only one thing for you and that is work on the grades that's all he is going to do for you but guess what educens i have outlined six policies for you here which i'm going to do for you including the one he's talking about so it means educens i have a leg or a head <laughs> guess what i mean i'm already i'm already seeing or, or feeling that educens that are there watching already made the decisions in their heart including you learning in your heart is already saying anna you are there for us because you have six policies for us and this man out like us since we started only one policy one policy so it mean an entire year two good semesters he will work on only one policy anna will work on six policies and more educens have you seen the edge i have over him so do not make that mistake do not make that mistake fellow educens i am influencer and i'm a leader by action a leader by resource vote me in and i give you the best thank you so love and sana remains silent and then continue to actually make so i hear from you you are the speakers here so what else do you want to tell me sir okay like she said i have only one one policy for the edusen that is far from the truth right i have got other other pol- policies because i have Manson highlighted them here I said I am going to work on welfare on collaboration on accessibility and on accountability those are the four areas that I am going to work on like let's say collaboration like in collaboration first in collaboration with 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 the research education and research minister I am going to help in the retention of our of our existing partnerships because i am aware of the aware of this that 
one of our partnership that was being set up by the 12th Executive Council was not being established, was not being sustained by the 12th Executive Council. And that is, that is collaboration, partnership with the University of Sec Antajok. The University of Sec Antajok. That's, that partnership has already been lost. I don't know what was the reason behind that. But then, as the aim and objective of EDUSA, one of the objectives is to foster to foster cordial relationship between school association, that is sub-association in the university, university administration, and also other universities within and outside of the Gambia. So therefore, that partnership is very important. So I am going to help to retain the existing partnership that we have. And also, I am going to work with the IPRO to establish other partnership to bring in other partnership like a partners partnership with Paradise FM, Paradise TV and also partnership with Choice FM among others. I am going to work with the IPRO to bring in that partnership for, for the Edusons to promote publicity. Also, accountability. Accountability. When I become the vice president of Edusa, I am going to execute my administrative administrative duties are stipulated in the constitution. I am going to create an atmosphere where students could use creative what could use could use creative criticism because I understand that criticism like rain should be gentle to nourish man's growth without destroying its roots. So therefore I am going to create that atmosphere for Edusas to inform Edusas about every development that concerns them that is going in and out of the out of the executive council with the help of the IPRO so that they could use constructive criticisms to help us to adjust on what they need to improve on their their well being. So that one also is part of my policy. I am not going to buttress on all my policy here, but then I have some of my policy in store when it when when we come come on the day of convention night i am going to bring a lot of policies that i have in store for educers thank you very much so like he said um, the convention night would be on the 14th november where you will hear a lot from them so fine tv uh, hopefully will be there to also make sure um, that particular program is aired 24 hours um, to the rest of the um, audience outside the university so do not miss the convention on the 14th, uh, where you'll hear a lot from the candidates, their policies, and also um, the strategies they have in place to make sure a user becomes great or greater, um, if not already great. So that is it. Um, tomorrow, we'll have another edition of this particular program, which is the policy debate. We'll have the education and research ministers here to also battle it out, uh, to tell us their policies and also entice us and convince us possibly to vote for um, any of them. So it is um, bye bye from me. But then before I take a leave of you, I want to say a big thank you to uh, Kekuta uh, and his team for uh, always giving us this platform to sell our agenda. Mr. Ibrahim is also another one uh, who has always been with us to make sure whatever we do is aired and also seen by the um, whole viewers of Fine TV. So thank you once again, and thank you, Edusans, for following up, and thank you, the rest of the audience of Fine TV. Do not touch this dial. Keep watching Fine TV, and keep watching this particular program. Tomorrow, another one comes. And on Saturday, the biggest of all is the presidential debate here on Fine TV. Thank you.